All right, guys, welcome to another episode of ARWP, the All Real Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Eric Novak, and today we have a special guest. He is Rohit Raju. The one and only Desi Hitman right here. His mother called him son because he shines like one. Rohit Raju, also known as Hakeem Zayn. How's it going? I'm great, man. I'm great, and I'm ready to start. This is an honor, and I cannot wait to hear what you got to say. Cool, man. I appreciate you having me on. Awesome. All right. Let's get the first question, and that's what made you want to pursue wrestling? Um, I've always loved professional wrestling. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I fell in love with it when I first saw it, and I've always been trying to get into it. Never knew how to get into it, and then I finally came across uh, a wrestling school that allowed me to also still work my full-time job and go to wrestling school. I trained for six months, and I think it went from August until March got cleared and just started heading out on the indies trying to perfect my craft that's awesome all right what would you say would be your your what was your first match like if you can remember all the way back to the earliest match what would it be i think my first match was they called it like a captain's fall match and i can't remember the rules of it but it was like an eight-man tag i believe or a 10-man tag uh, so and they put us in there with some veterans that were, you know, around the scene to help us, you know, so it's because it was our first time and we just each person had like a little bit to do. And then I think the next thing I had was another captain's fall match or another multi-man uh, tag match. And then there was an actual tag team match. So just from there, I can't remember what my first singles match would have been. That I don't recall. All right, it's fine. You know, it's been years already. All right, let's go to more about, you know, what you're currently doing, how you're, you know, on impact on a weekly basis. We get to watch, we, versus, we watched you against Trey Miguel. Now we watched you against Rhino. How is that? How has, you know, the year's been treating you for impact? It's been good. Uh, the fact that I've actually signed with impact and grew and have had a chance to grow at, at, at impact wrestling. I remember watching the old TNA pay-per-views and they were like five bucks every Wednesday. So being a part of that company is huge for me. It's, it's very special. And I get to see a lot of people that I grew up watching, talk to them on a first name basis, be in the ring with them like I was with Rhino. So that's a huge deal for me. Uh, obviously for me though, I'm a hard worker. Um, I am, I, I feel like I'm better off in the company than I was when I first started, uh, whether it's the matches I'm having, people I'm being in the ring with, or my own confidence level uh, and just feeling calm and comfortable out there and being able to perform a lot better than what I did when I first started. And, you know, I know a lot of people in the locker room now. It's a different locker room than it was when I first started. I think it's a better locker room, especially the morale. I absolutely love it. Everyone there works hard and pushes each other to work hard. And no one's really too much of a dick. You know, we bust balls and stuff like that with each other. But other than that, that's about it. I am trying to work my way up. That's the thing, obviously. I'm, I'm no longer satisfied with being at this entry-level position. And I really, I, I know they know my talent. And it's, it's for me, it's like, hey, let's uh, get this ball rolling. It's time to elevate me because I feel like I have a lot of talent and there's things that I can do to help the company, but also I can do to help bring more uh, value to the name Rohit Raju as well. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. You know, uh, as a fan, I watch you. I said I watch you, and I watch you every day, like every Tuesday. And, you know, I see what you do. I see what you can bring out. You know, me and my, my co-host who used to run the show with me, he told me, like, you're going to win, you're going to beat Trey and all that. And, you know, I said, I hope. I said, I wish if they give him that position. You're getting closer and closer. That's what we're understanding is you're getting there. You're getting to the point where people get to watch you and people get to understand who you are. And that's, you know, the, the growth of everything. That's why, it's, right. that's why it's amazing to see you thrive and you work hard. And that's why, you know, I do hope and I do understand that you will be uh, an impact champion uh, at one point of your career. So let's talk about, you know, since you are part or were or what's good, because I know it's all about the setting. It's all about what's going on right now with the Daisy yeah. Hit Squad. Everyone's separated. How do you feel about that after this is over? After this is over and Impact Wrestling is back to normal, they go, hey, what do you want us to do with you? Want us to give you this uh, freedom where you get to say you're done with Daisy Hit Squad or you want to go for a tag title shot? 
I want to be myself. I've already told them because we've done everything that we can do with the Daisy Hit Squad. I do feel like they did drop the ball a little bit with us. And there was a lot of obstacles and hurdles that we had to jump over. You know, Gersinder had uh, visa issues, and then he ended up wanting to leave anyways. And then Raj and I had to chill, and that, that took some time. And then you bring in Shira, and then Shira and I have to gel. That takes some time. And then Raj gets injured, and then Shira goes back to India, and then the pandemic happens. And so, you know, but for me, I've, in my opinion, I've always been the constant in that, that faction. So I honestly, I do want to be selfish right now because I didn't get into professional wrestling to get into a faction. I didn't get into professional wrestling to be a part of a team. I got into professional wrestling to be a single star. And I feel like I have all the talent and the ability to be a single star. So it's really, it's hard because I don't have control over that, you know? I don't have that control. I can't tell them, hey, I want to be a single star. Mm -hmm. If they say, hey, what, do we, what should we do with you? I'll tell them. I'll, exactly. You know, I'll say, hey, this is what I want to do. And I have been doing it as of late. I've been more vocal and I've been speaking up a lot more because now, for me, it's like, it's put up or shut up time. I'm, I'm talented enough to where I can shine on my own. So let's do that. And once this is all over, I don't want the hit squad to get back together because then we're just going to fall back in the same tropes, the same routine where we're not going to be doing anything and let us shine individually. And when the time is right, then we return, then we form. And then it's something special until then. You bring us right back and we fall right back in the same thing and I'm getting slapped by Gamma and I'm goofy and it's all this. And there's no growth, you know? There's no growth as a character. You're just doing this. You're just going in circles. And for me, that's not what I want to do. I want to spread my wings and fly. And I feel like this is the opportunity, but I'm out of the cage now. I want to keep flying and I know how high I can go. It's just them. They need to stop trying to pull me back down here and there, you know, or whatever they're doing. I don't know what their plans are for me. That's that's the God's honest truth because I've asked and, I, like I said, I pitch stuff and it does get frustrating, but I don't want them to keep pulling me down. Just let me fly, see how high I can go before you decide on how high I can go because I'm pretty sure, especially when they let me cut those promos, no one ever knew I could talk unless you saw my indie stuff. So people that I never even heard of, even like dirt sheets, everyone was just like, man, I can't wait to see more of this. This is what I want to see out of you. And then it kind of just went, it, that went away. It's like, no, that was working. Let's let's continue that. Let's let's continue that chip on the shoulder. So, but I, I like I said, I have no control over that. I got it. Are you talking about your AAW performance with the the hustle and the muscle? Yeah, even that. Like any indies for I've been cutting promos since day one, and everyone's always said you can cut good promos. So that's one of my things I love. Nowadays, professional wrestling, if you look at the fan base, some people enjoy, like to me, like Randy Orton is the last of a certain breed. Like John Cena, to me, was the last megastar. He controlled the crowd, whether he was in the ring or whether he was on the microphone. I don't feel like a lot of guys nowadays can cut great promos. There's good promos, but there's not great promos. They are just come across as wrestling promos. You don't feel when they speak. I don't think that's, you know, because I think a lot of people nowadays, they concentrate more on the in-ring ability, which is also very cool. There's a lot of athletic individuals out there. But then when they go to talk on the microphone and they try to cut those single promos, it's not a star. You can always have a backstage segment where stuff is edited and you're getting fed lines and that can come across great. But when you're out in the middle of the ring and you're cutting that promo, to me, that is that that separates you from everybody else. Because to me, that's a star. You can back it up in the ring and you can back it up on the microphone. And the greatest wrestlers of all time could all do that. They could tell the story, whether they're talking on the mic or whether they're in the ring. So that's what I try to concentrate on. So um, having that AEW was a big thing for me because we cut those secret promos when I had the mask and nobody mm -hmm. knew who I was and stuff like that. And everyone thought it was, oh, it's Austin Aries, it's Killer Cross, oh, it's Eli Drake. They're th saying all these big names. And it wasn't. It was me, somebody that nobody cared about, somebody that nobody thought about. And everyone, I remember when, they, they, when I revealed it was me, everyone was like, oh, that sucks, it's this guy. 
but you were just hyping up the promo when you when you didn't know it wasn't somebody else cutting the promo yet, Nimrod. It was me. You know what I mean? So that's it's it's, it's so stupid. It goes to show you that oh, let's not cheer this guy because he's not popular. He doesn't have a fan base, even though I'm the one with all the talent doing all the work. And yeah, when um, and so when I cut that promo in the middle of the ring at AAW, it was it changed the game a little bit because it was passionate and it was real. And so, yeah, that, that got me a decent amount of buzz for a little bit. And then the stuff at Impact, which is very similar, they said, hey, you cut a good chip on the shoulder promo. Let's cut those. And I said, cool. And I cut it. And then I felt like I, like you'll see in the past, the next few weeks, there is none of that. It's back to kind of downtrodden, goofy Rohit, which I really want to get away from. And I hope that's what we're working, what we're working towards. But because uh, that doesn't add value to my name if I'm continuing to be that guy Mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm way more talented than that guy so when it comes to it's weird because it's not like I'm a a top impact guy you know I'm not pushed to the moon I'm still at the bottom so that doesn't help me when it comes to indie bookings because nobody wants Rohit Raju on their their uh, show because he's not bringing Rohit Raju isn't bringing in anybody. He's not bringing in. He's not. There's no name value there because he's nobody really on TV. So that's why Hakeem Zayn has to be stronger, has to be more visceral, has to be the exact opposite of what Rohit Raju is. It isn't an Indian character. It's me being me, being angry, being bitter, being vicious, not throwing temper tantrums, but being passionate that he is the most underrated wrestler on this planet and he believes it. And when he speaks, you believe it, whether you agree with it or not. That's the difference. That's where the money is. Not being, losing every single week to say, well, it doesn't matter. Wins and loss don't count in professional wrestling. It does when you're trying to make money. Uh, Wins and loss, that counts. If your character is viewed As a job guy, I'm sorry, that counts about when it comes to making money outside of the promotion. It's not like AEW if you have like that contract where you don't work anywhere else or it's not like WWE where you don't work anywhere else. I work other places. So that does not help me make more money as Rohit Raju. And there's I'm not bad mouthing that, but that's just how it is. There's no there's no name value there. So it's time to turn it around and get some name value there because then not only is that going to help me out, but I can also help the company out because with that name value, then Rohit Raju appears on the indies, and then you get that guy that you see on TV that has his the chip on the shoulder and that's winning matches here and there, and that is being a superstar, being a player in the company. Now he's bringing that out there, and then when people see that, they're like, oh, man, this guy's on TV. Let me go see what he's doing on TV, and it's the same thing. When you see me as Hakeem Zayn, and then you see me as Rohit Raju, every fan, I mean, the majority of them, they're like, how come we don't see this guy on Impact? How come we don't see the Hakeem Zayn on Impact? Why don't you change your name to Hakeem Zayn? Brothers and sisters, I have no control over that. That's not, you know, that's not, that's not, that ball is not in my court. I have no stroke like that. But that is the difference. And that's what I want to break. I want to get rid of that stigma of being a bottom guy because I have the ability and the talent, the talent to be a mid card guy. And then guess what? You put me in the ring with top guys, and then I'm going to be a top guy because I absorb stuff like a sponge. And that's the goal. I didn't get into professional wrestling just to have a job and stay at the entry-level position. Some people might be okay with that, but not me. No matter what job I go to, okay, I'm a sales associate. Well, guess what? I'm going to work my way up to a supervisor. Then I'm going to work my way up to an assistant manager. Then I'm going to work my way up to the store manager because that's what I do because I want success. I want to be in the top um, you know, bracket of whatever I'm doing, and I want to make that money. But I can't do that if I'm not allowed to do that. So that's that's you know that's where a lot of my frustrations lie too. And I didn't mean to hijack your show. And no, no, this, is, this is what I love. But that's just where it lies, you know. This is this is what I love, you know, because we never, unless someone goes, "Hey, can you can you come on and say this?" We'll never hear this. Like I've been yeah. following you for so long. I remember when I first created this account, I got a request from you actually following my thing first. So I'm like, no way. I cannot believe Rohit or Hazim is following me. It's like amazing, you know? So I love the fact that you're getting to speak out like this. I remember I was walking my dog and I was watching Instagram live, how you were just talking. It's amazing to get wrestlers to talk the truth, talk the passion. That's what 
fans need. Because if they don't get that, they'll just be like, oh, he likes what he's doing. He's being a clown. He wants to be a clown, you know? No right, one understands. Right. But, you know, from all of that, I want to see if I can go piece by piece. From all of that, yeah. I want to start from the beginning where it's like, when I, w- when I started watching Impact, it was, you know, a couple years. And recently, when you guys came back to New York, I believe it was you guys versus Fala, TJ, and Daga. And you guys took a win. That was a big accomplishment. If yeah. this quarantine didn't happen, was there some kind of push to the Daisy Head Squad? Was there going to be something? I don't know. I think they were really trying to get behind Shira and I. Because Shira has, you know, they, they want that. When it comes to business, they, they want that Indian market. And Shira's huge in India. Absolutely huge. I mean, the guy gets millions of views on his Instagram videos and stuff like that. And so they put me with him as the workhorse to do all the heavy lifting. And then Shira comes in as cleanup. I think they were really trying to get us to gel maybe to give us a push towards those tag titles i don't know i you know i mean I, i'm never really told what i'm doing even when i ask i don't because i don't think they have a complete i don't think i always say there's a deck of cards and i feel like i'm not in their deck of cards and so they know what they're doing with these five deck you know these five cards they yeah. know what they're going to do they know what they want they where they want to go and then you have these other cards spread out on the table and I, they're like, well, maybe we can do this with this, or maybe we can do this with this. Maybe we can put this card here and add a six card. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just put it back. And it's like, so I never know. And I always pitch things. Like I, I said, the whole thing with the Deaners, that was my idea. I got the idea from old world class when, um, who was it? Was it Jimmy Garvin? It was the loser does, loser becomes the other one's slave, right? And I don't want to use that as a, a thing, but I think that was the gimmick of the match. So I think it was Jimmy Garvin. I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think it was he had to go work on the Von Eric farm oh, or something yeah. like that. Okay. So that's where I got the idea from. We were very rich and classy, and then you had these smelly Deaners. And so I was like, well, Deaners aren't doing nothing. And Jake something, Jake Deaner is like my best friend. So I'm like, anytime, anytime I get a chance to work with him, we kill it. So I'm like, hey, let's do something with the Deaner. So I ran to Jimmy Jacobs and I said, hey, here's this idea I have. And he goes, okay, so text me, why are we doing this? What are, what everything is? So I I sat back and I thought about it and I said, cool, why don't we have uh, singles matches with each other? And then, you know, one guy wins, one set wins, the other one loses, whatever. Why don't we have a bar fight? Uh, I thought of like going back to Chris Jericho and Regal when Jericho peed in Regal's tea. I was like, why don't they piss in our hook and Gama's hookah? And then and, and Jimmy, he tightened it up and he was like, how about we have them pour beer in your tea? We can have like this tea set, like it's a sacred saying tea set and Gama finally passes it down to you because you've been proving yourself. And then the Deaners put beer in it. And then we had the bar fight. And then we had the culmination where we stole, we beat them in like a multi-tag match. And then they beat us in a a regular tag match. And then we beat them up at the bar. And then um, we had the main match where it was a loser. They either come work with us at the Gama's Mansion in India or we go work at the farm. And I pitched that to them because we had nothing. We weren't doing anything. And uh, they liked it. And so it was awesome. And the farm stuff was some of my favorite stuff. I absolutely loved it. So, you know, going back to your point, like coming on the show and and saying stuff like that um, earlier, and I'll go back to the whole, was there a push for the hit squad? But uh, I, I, I don't say it as a disgruntled employee, and I hope I never come across that way. I say it as a very impassionate, a very passionate employee. I love being at Impact Wrestling. I don't want anyone to ever think that I don't, especially the company. <clears throat> you know, that's not my case. That's not the case. I love being there, but I just want to be somebody there. And I feel like I have the talent to be somebody there. I don't think there's anybody there besides maybe two or three people that are cutting better promos than me. And they know that. And for whatever reason, like Don Callis didn't like my catchphrase, which the consumers like the catchphrase, but for whatever reason, Don didn't like it. So it's just like, okay, well, 
you know, what are we going to do with that? Why well, they don't want me to use that now. So I have to think of something else, which I do because I'm a good promo guy. I'll think of something else, but I'll still sprinkle it in here and there because that's money. People sing along with it at indie shows all the time. So it's just getting that opportunity to be more in the company because I want to be. And I feel like I've been busting my butt and wrestling doesn't desert. He doesn't owe you anything. You can bust your butt your entire life, be a great worker and never get anywhere. But I'm, if I have the chance to speak out about it, I'm going to speak out about it because whereas the dynamic of Gamma and I, that's funny. I love it. I know it's entertaining. It has to lead somewhere. I can't keep getting slapped around my entire career. There's no point. There's no payoff. Mm-hmm. But going way back to what you were saying and go off on these rants, <laughs> um, I do – I think they were gearing up something towards Shira and I. Uh, but if it, if they were, I have no idea. I, you know, I wasn't told. So, and then the pandemic happened and I'm the only guy there. So they have to do something with me. Yeah. Because I remember even before that match, you were at the rebellion pre-show, like the pre-taping at rebellion and you guys had the whole tag match. You guys came on top from every other tag team. So it's like yep. you would think that you guys are gearing for that push against the North. But again, I feel like because of this pandemic, a lot of things got changed. But, yeah. you know, getting into your mindset, I understand it. So, like, if I asked you, what would you prefer, tag matches or singles? You're going to say singles because that's your vision. You want to do singles action. Yeah. Now, getting back to what you were saying, you know, I want to cut pieces. You talked about AEW, talked about hitting promos. No one knew it was you. People were mad. You know, you get that reaction, and, and, and I understand that because, you know, you probably get tagged in these things. You probably, you probably actually see this. But every time I speak to people, like friends or family, you, you're a big key of a, of a talented and famous wrestler. You know, people like you. People are like, oh, no way, it's him. I want to go to this show to see him. Like, it's weird how, you know, you're saying that, like, people don't care if it's Rahi Raju unless I have Shira with me or whatever. But I feel like, you know... Everyone, wa- everyone who's not, you know, close from wrestling would watch Independence and they know that Independence is a lot more stronger, a lot more powerful than company wrestling. Because that's real blood, hard sweat. And I feel like people who get to see Hakim Zayn, people who get to see Rohit Raju, you know, like if it's... Because I know a lot of uh, town promoters like to promote the wrestling name, like Impact Superstar, Rohit Raju will be at our show. I feel like people still to that point get excited because you do hit the best promos. And I feel like so many people know that. And I feel like some people have told Impact that, but it's all about like if Impact agrees. And again, like you said, no one is, you know, bad mouthing Impact. I love Impact. I think that's probably one of the best products or the best product we're having right now on a weekly basis with just them break doing groundbreaking moments by making Tessa Blanchard champion. You know, they're they're upgrading, they're evolving like any other company who isn't right now. You know, you guys are the only ones who are keep breaking those barriers and keep hitting, you know, new and big bigger achievements. And I feel like, you know, it's very different from how people see Hakim Zayn to Rohit Raju. And I'm curious how you, like, how do you keep changing it? How do you keep switching from a company, like, going as Rohit Raju, doing this, and then going to the independent scene and going Hakim Zayn? You know, isn't it hard to live, you know, two lives? Or has anyone, like, gone up to you and go, you know, why are you doing this? Or, you know, is this is this because of what impact like the licensing or or the name barrier um i'll answer that question in a second i do want to go back to what you're saying about impact i honestly believe we're the most underrated uh wrestling program out there right now people that don't even watch us they still have that stigma of the old days not the old tna days when we were you know got a lot of love but the old days when it wasn't a good product and they still try to tag us like we're a bad product. We're not a bad product. We're actually a really great product. Our roster, I will put them up against any roster because I believe in them. You know, these guys, mm-hmm. we know how to do both the indie style but also TV style. Mm-hmm. And we go out there and we bust our butt all the time. And we're constantly doing things that are innovative. Look at Johnny Swinger. Johnny Swinger is hilarious, absolutely hilarious. He's great for TV. Nobody else is doing stuff like that, in my opinion. Now, granted, too, I don't get a lot. I don't get to watch a lot of AEW just because I don't have uh, TNT. I don't have cable anymore. I just use the internet for everything. And the WWE stuff, no disrespect to them, the stuff that I have watched, I just haven't been 
you know, maybe it's just not for me anymore. I don't know. I'm just not impressed by it. Not the athletes, not the roster, because they're obviously doing the best they can with what they have. I'm just not a fan of what I, that stuff that I watch. Um, I do watch a lot of, before it was done, I was watching a lot of New Japan. I actually, the majority of wrestling I watch is old stuff, just to see what maybe no one else is doing. But going back, I believe Impact Wrestling is so underrated. I hate the fact that we don't get the respect we deserve from all these major dirt sheets and um, fans. It's so annoying. And when I see it, I'm like, oh, Impact, oh, this match, oh, that's going to... Like, shut up. You know what I mean? Like, you don't even watch the product and you're trying to crap on it. Get, like, get out of here. There's it's so one annoying. guy I cannot stand. And, and, and it's because, you know... It's not like, you know, we do this. People who interview wrestlers, they don't give them their opinions on it. They listen to what they have to say. Then you have this one guy, and, and I promise you, even my co-host, if he's listening to this, he'll know who it is. It's Dave Meltzer. I cannot stand Dave Meltzer. This, like, he's got this popularity. He's got this huge amount of people liking his stuff. But it's all his opinion, and his opinion's apparently judging other people's opinions. Like, oh, he doesn't like Impact. Why do I have to watch Impact? Even though you have this amazing talented roster that's a problem with in my opinion and it goes back to how you said how powerful indie wrestling is nowadays that's a problem with uh, i don't want to say maybe society you have these things that because there's some professional wrestlers out there and i i will say it i don't think they're that good you know but they are very popular and I don't want to hate on them because I love to see anybody getting their stuff, but they're very popular because they did something that somebody liked and then this person liked it and this person liked it. But then it got word got out like, Hey, this guy's cool or this lady's cool. And then people that don't even like it, but they'll jump on that bandwagon because they're being told it's cool. Kind of like how you said with Meltzer. I've never met Dave Meltzer, never talked to him. Probably never will. Who knows? I have no idea. I, I don't. Whatever he, he does, I'm not going to badmouth him. But I totally disagree with the fact that he doesn't like impact. I mean, come on, man. We have some of the best talent there. It's just, to me, that's petty. And professional wrestling is going really well right now. You can have your favorites, but don't try to discredit other stuff unless it really is bad. And even the bad stuff has its good moments. So, and so that's annoying to see stuff like that. I hate that. It's almost like professional wrestling it has its clicks and it's like elitist fans and that's the stuff that turns me off so much i can't stand that it, even movies and music that's how it is it's just, i think that's how society is nowadays because with especially with social media you you can form this opinion and once mob mentality forms around that opinion whether it's good or bad people are going to push it you know what i mean like i said people push popularity over talent nowadays and it's it's annoying to see that uh going back to your original question about do people come up to me and say well how come your rohit raju here or hakeem zane there it's cool to hear that you said people want to see rohit uh, I, I do know I have a little cult following, um, which I love and I appreciate those fans. What culture is, they put me over all the time. I just read an article somebody said to me, he said, hey man, people are catching on. And they said, why is Impact wasting this guy's talent? Like, what is, what are they doing? And it makes me feel good that, because they're pretty popular, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. it's cool to see someone or a place like that pushing for me. And because I don't really have any voices pushing for me besides like my cult following and stuff. And that's why I always tell people, if you don't like the way I'm being treated, you have to tell Impact Wrestling that you're wasting this guy's talent. So, and that could, like I said, that could change. They, they could be doing something, cooking up something for me real cool. And I, I hope that's the case. But no, Impact doesn't, they want, they would rather me be Rohit Raju everywhere. But some promotions don't want me to be Rohit Raju because they don't want what they consider like an Indian stereotype being on the show. They knew my work as Hakeem Zayn before I was Rohit Raju. Hakeem Zayn is what got me to impact not being Rohit Raju. Mm -hmm. And it, that's what brought me to the dance. The difference is really, and now I'm trying, I'm starting to blend the two, is Hakeem Zayn that people have been seeing recently 
he's an intense and passionate individual, but he's so sick and tired of being so underrated. You know, look at my followers. I have like not even 4,000 followers and I wrestle every Tuesday on TV nationwide. It's like, what am I doing wrong? And sometimes I look in the mirror and be like, man, do I suck? There's, what, am I just not good in the ring? And people tell me I'm good, but I'm just not. And then I look and I'm like, no, I'm, you know, I'm judging myself um, with, you know, clear, like uh, glass empty. And I'm like, no, I'm actually pretty good. I'd be a fan of that. And then I watch my promos. I watch the promo I cut. I'm like, man, that was pretty good. Cause usually I'm my own worst critic. I'm like, oh, that looked terrible. Oh, that was horrible. Why did I say that? Or why did I do that? I should have done this. And I, I break myself down a lot. But then I watch some stuff. I'm like, man, that's pretty good. It's actually really smooth. That's really crisp. And a lot of the boys will be like, dude, I don't, I don't know why they're not doing more with you. They will say how good I am. So that if I know my peers are saying that and they notice an improvement, they notice a change, I have to be doing something right. But for whatever reason, it's not clicking with the masses so you know maybe the fact that i don't do what's i try to do what's popular nowadays maybe that does, maybe that's it i'm still trying to be like a rest, a tv wrestler i'd rather be like a steve austin or a rock or a randy orton those guys because we're still going to be talking about them from 30 years from now i don't know if we'll still be talking about a lot of top indie names that make it to tv and that that tv you, you watch them, they're not TV stars. They're really good in the ring, but they can't. There's something that does not translate, you know what I mean? I'm still trying to be that guy. So maybe that's what I'm doing wrong, though. Who knows? But no, Rohit, they would rather have me be Rohit, but it's Hakeem Zayn that's brought me to the dance. And with the, you saw Hakeem Zayn on Impact when they let me cut those chip on the shoulder promos, that was me being angry, being passionate, being bitter about my place in the world, about my place in wrestling. And that's the main difference. It's also a big difference because it's real. I am fed up with my place in professional wrestling. I do feel like I should be um, recognized more. And I, I don't want to come across like a whiny ass or something like that because there's so many great wrestlers out there that should be recognized more. But I'm not worried about those guys. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about the money I'm making. I'm worried about my fame and whatever. So yeah, I mean, that's the difference there. And I would love to take Rohit everywhere, but Rohit has to have some name value first. And it has to be a guy that is somebody in that company, not just another guy. Cause I've, I've watched people, I've watched podcasts when they've talked about me or I've read stuff and people are like, I don't watch Rohit Roju matches anymore because I already know the outcome. So, you know what I mean? And that's fair. That's fair. Like if I'm wrestling, I wrestle Rhino, people thought, okay, well this is going to be something and then I lose again. And then the next time on TV, if I lose again, and then the next time on TV, if it's a constant, you're just losing, losing, losing. Okay, you know, this guy puts on good matches, but I already know the outcome, so I don't need to watch it. There's there's nothing else I don't keeping be, people. I don't want to be devil's advocate, but it's like also I was watching an interview with uh, Brian Myers, a.k.a. Kurt Hawkins, and he played this role in WWE where he lost every match, like literally a couple years straight. And the, the what he said was people actually tuned in every time because – that one match that he could have had could have been the win, you know? So, uh, for me, I, I mean, you get... It's not even the fact that people like, oh, I don't like the outcome. It's, wrestling isn't about win or lose. Like, you like you have someone like Will Ospreay event against Okada, Kazuchika Okada. Every time they faced in a singles match, Okada won. So, it's like, you can't... People go, oh, I can't watch the match anymore because I know the outcome of who's going to win this. It doesn't work like that. As a wrestling fan, you have to watch the match fully. So what I'm saying by the whole point about you losing, it's not demonstrating your full potential or your talent or anything that you bring to the table by people saying they want to shut it out. So that's ignorance. So that's just what I want to point out to people that are listening. Yeah, and, and, and but also, too, if you look at Will Ospreay and Okada, those are two top names. So it's like watching The Rock. He would always lose to Austin, but The Rock was still a top name. And what I mean wins and losses, if... I haven't been established in impact as anything, as a threat, I guess you could say, you know, and I've had some wins there and stuff like that, which is cool, but I haven't been established in impact 
as a threat. So the difference, what I mean by wins and losses is people expect me to lose. And whether it's the storyline is, oh, let's get behind this guy. He's the underdog. It's hard to be that and, and uh, I guess, be like a, the heel I'm trying to be, maybe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a big difference in watching Okada and Osprey wrestle, who are two top names who are threats to each other. And then me, who hasn't beaten anybody, you know, I'm not a threat yet. I'm not. It's like OVE. OVE came in hot the tag, when they were a tag team, right? They were... They dominated for a long time. They had stellar matches with LAX. And then they started to lose, 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 lose. They get a win. They'd lose, 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 get a win. Then Jake Chris gets the X Division title. They're still a threat because they were built up as a threat. Mm. So they were they were already somebody and now they're 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 complacent, but they're still um, they're still value, I guess, to their name. Where me it was lose 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 maybe a win lose lose i wasn't really anybody to worry about i wasn't a threat to anybody you didn't you didn't say well maybe rohit will win this one he's been i don't know what you know what i mean it was when Shira and i were teaming up because it started to get like that we started to build some steam but i haven't me personally or in the singles i haven't really built up any steam to actually warrant that attention i guess you could say so that's what i mean when winning and losing does matter in a sense because you got to have that name value especially if i'm going to be working on the indies and you want me to take rohit out there there has to be a little bit of name value that people want to see um that guy wrestle and i'll be rohit on the indies i don't mind that at all uh but sometimes people they just don't want it Mm -hmm. so all right understandable you know i actually while you were speaking, I had an idea because you were talking about OV. You were talking about, let me pitch an idea for you. And this isn't like, oh my God, Impact already did it. This is just a thing. Council culture is really popular right now. They just got, you know, OVE to split up, basically. They just got J. Chris part of OVE. You know, they do this whole thing. If someone tells you, hey, you know, OVE is taking P- people from different teams, making them their own person, you know, and they go, do you want to join uh, Council culture? Do you want to do that? Would you say, yeah, would you? Because then you'd have a different uh, competition level. It wouldn't be... Because t- they're not really a tag team, you know? You won't put right. Van Dam and uh, Joey, you know, in a tag match. It's just unpredictable. So it's like they're, right. they're doing their own thing. Would you join Cancel Culture if that's basically the resort that they're going to have to take? Um, For me, if it was up to me, no. I'd rather be a single star. I honestly would rather not be associated with anybody right now and give myself time to breathe because I was already associated with somebody for so long, you know? And then you kind of get, you can even, you can stand out in the group, but if you're in a group like that, then they have to pick, well, who do we want our main guys to be? And then who do you want the cannon fodder to be? I feel like I would just be cannon fodder again and I would just be in the same role I was before if that makes any sense. But then again, I could be a singles guy and still be cannon fodder as well. But I I just kind of want to spread my wings and fly on my own right now and show people that I can stand on my own. I can be my own star. Uh, Funny story, in AEW, I was was having good matches. He put me in the ring with good guys. But the crowd, they weren't really, you know, invested in me. He goes, you look great, the promoter. He goes, you look great. You're good in the ring. He goes, you're putting on all these great matches. He says, but the crowd's just not, they just don't, they're not into you. They just don't care. He goes, what do I have to do to change that? I said, give me a microphone. I said, nobody else. I can wrestle. I can do the same moves as everybody else. You know, maybe not a lot of the cooler ones, athletic ones, because I'm not that athletic anymore. But I said, give me a microphone because that will separate me from everybody else. And that's when he's like, all right. And I was away from AEW for a while. And then... Trent and Rob came up with the idea to cut these promos behind the mask and then the rest is history. And that instantly made me somebody different. That made me an individual. That made me a star there. And then I was such a hated individual because I crapped on Chicago. I crapped on the crowd. We beat up their top baby faces. It was wrestling 101. 
And so now, you know, I'm somebody at AAW, which is one of the best indie promotions in the world. Mm, that's, the same, that's the same thing that can happen at Impact. Give me the microphone. I will break away from the pack because that is where my bread and butter is. I've always I've been putting on good matches at Impact. I can get in the ring and you can put me in there with anybody and I'm going to wrestle them and it's going to be good, great, you know, or whatever. Um, but me on the mic, that makes me, in my opinion, a star compared to, uh, I guess... I don't want to say everybody else because everyone else is out there is so good, but that separates me from everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's my own identity. And it, it puts me up there, in my opinion, because it's work. It's a, it's a formula that I've tried, and it's a, try, it's a tried and true formula. You know, it's been tested, and it has worked for me. So, uh, you know, and, and, uh, that all depends, too. Am I in that deck of cards? So it all goes back to that. All right, we're going to get out of the Impact question soon. We're going to get to, like, a lot of the fun stuff. I didn't mean to just go starting with Impact, you know. I just oh, thought... no, man. I mean, that's it's it's awesome. And I, like I said, I, I, I don't want anyone to think, like, man, Rohit's miserable there. No, man, I love being there. I love seeing everybody. I think that roster is amazing. It's, it, I absolutely love it. Like I said, I do believe that the company is, like, the most underrated company in wrestling right now, hands down, like I everyone think there, they I think work ROH so is hard. Dead. I think ROH is completely dead. I think Impact, like, like as an Impact fan, I, I believe that Impact is right near, or maybe a little bit below, due to the the big brands with WWE and AEW. You know, I think Impact yeah. is literally the the third best. People have their own opinions, but in my opinion, I think you know New Japan is gone. They're they're out for months already. Then you have ROH, yeah. which is basically doing the same thing. Impact is boosted up, especially with all these new talents. You know, Johnny Impact left, Killer Cross left. You know, but you got people. You got people like Eddie Edwards who's coming back in the mix. Tessa Blanchard, Michael Elgin. You got Ace Austin who's doing more than just X Division stuff. There's such a amazing growth and amazing talent with Impact. Yeah, and Trey as well. You know, he's he's starting to get that big push and get up there at the main, get that seat at the main table. And it's so cool because they're making new stars. And I, yeah, I don't ever want anyone to think. I just want the only thing is. I, I people say know your worth mm-hmm. and I believe that I do know my worth and my my worth is more than being constantly being a bottom guy that's that's all I'm saying and I think I prove that with the promos because I can cut those those promos I can cut up my sleep and then my in-ring ability is just going to continue to get better the more comfortable I get which it has that's I'm never going to not stop giving 100% when I'm in that ring whether I'm happy with my position or not that's the only thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can speak for Jake Diener as well. If you ever watched him be Jake something outside of uh, the indies, the guy has it. You know, he has that it factor, and people just gravitate towards him in and outside the ring. So they need to pull, let the leash off him too sooner or later. But And that's the only thing. I don't want to come across as this miserable person that's, oh, I hate my life i i can't stand my company that's not it at all Mm -hmm. i just want to grow and i need them to open up the cage door let me soar and let me do it just take the clamps off and then but also you know elevate me because i'm you give me the ball i'm going to run with it then that could be in the cards i honestly don't know i hope so but I and I don't know. No, we have to see. So my next question, and I guess I'm leaving it back soon. It was the big pay per view. It was the TNA TNA nonstop action thing that was going to happen. You know, during WrestleCon. You know, watching. You know, I was at the A Town Beatdown. I saw that you're versing veterans. You know, a lot, they put up a lot of veterans against you. You had to face them. You know, tell me what you would have, because I had TJP on here a while back, and he was telling me that he was going to be part of the X Division title match. That that's what they told him. What were you supposed to do? Because no one knows if it's canceled. No one knows if it's being pushed or it's probably going to be pushed till next year's WrestleCon. But what would you have been doing for that pay-per-view? What would they have given you? I don't even know if I was on it, to be honest with really? you. Yeah, I was going to be at WrestleCon anyways because I had a couple bookings. But I have no clue. I told Jimmy, I said, I'm going to be down in Florida. I want to be on the show. Um... I think they were going to 
try and do something maybe with me in the X Division match, but I have no idea. I didn't I didn't hear, you know what I mean? And so I even pitched being the brown machismo because I do a really good Macho Man impression. I said, well, we just have me do the brown machismo, a one-night-only thing. I said, I'll come out there and cut a promo as a brown machismo, and then just have, if you guys can get Monty, have Monty come out, and I'll take the pounce from him just because I want it, you know, because I'm Monty and I stay in the same city, and he's helped me in my career, earlier in my career, so I would love to just return that favor because I think he's the man. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I pitched for it, I wanted for it, I asked to be on, but as far as I knew, I wasn't going to be used. All right, all right. So let's get out of impact. Let's get into, you know, more about you, more about your experience. Tell me the largest card you ever worked and the smallest card you ever worked. The smallest card was probably like five, ten people. I can't remember what promotion it was, but there was nobody there. I think we won. Oh, excuse me. No. Oh. I think the guy ran like on the Super Bowl where it was something ridiculous and there was like probably 10 people in the crowd and I was just like what is this idiot doing why would he run that day but it was wrestling and I'm not a big football guy anymore so I I went and uh, wrestled and, and I was still green as grass back then so I think that was probably one of them the biggest crowd I think the biggest crowd to be honest was this promotion, I can't. I think it was the same promotion. He did a show <laughs> at it was called like the Cherry Fest in Bad Axe, and it was an outside show. But there was probably like three, four thousand people there. I don't know. It was a lot of people. It could have been that. It could have been a show in Ohio and Lima called War Wrestling. They usually draw pretty huge. Um, uh, super kicked in Toronto at, at uh, on Queen Street. They usually draw a really huge crowd. Um, standing room only, which is freaking awesome. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't remember, to be honest. But man, it, I love wrestling in front of those huge crowds. Because especially when they're feeling it, ah, oh, it feels so good. Awesome. There's nothing like it. Yeah. All right. Now, this one we have to think about because there's always a match, but it's always like a, a big thinker. What was the strangest match you ever worked in? Was it either a venue? Was it either the ring? I heard crazy things like weed festivals. I heard things like music festivals. I heard things like in a boxing ring or um, like you got water hoses for ropes. I've heard almost everything. What was like the strangest thing that you ever had to do? or go or see in a match well i guess you know going back to your first that last question wrestling at the current tapings there's no crowd so maybe that's you know what i mean maybe that is like uh the lowest crowd i ever worked in <laughs> front of nobody um as far as weird matches i've had some weird matches none are coming to mind ah oh. uh, i wrestled this one guy didn't take care of his ring and it felt like death and he was a big guy so he never bumped in the ring so he didn't care and he would leave it outside and the boards would always break and stuff would be frozen together in the winter and he just it was crap and the ropes were you know there were hoses but you know they were wrapped up but they the ropes would break all the time and taking a slam in it was like you might as well just take a bump on the floor it was it was horrific I have wrestled in a boxing ring before. That sucked. Um, music festivals, I've wrestled one. It was, I don't want to say weird, it was fun. We'd have a music festival. This guy would put on a music festival at a bar. He was a big wrestling fan. And we did a thing where I would come out and interrupt him during his set. So one year I came out, interrupted him, talked trash to him, you know. The next year, I talked trash to him, and he interfered in the match, and he cost me the match. And the third year, I challenged him to a match. And I remember I brought him over and taught him how to do a few things. And we had this match, and he was we had a blast. He had this yellow, because 
the Banana Convention was the name of his band, and they were pretty popular around the area, and he had his whole family there. <laughs> and we wrestled, man. It was probably one of my favorite matches because the crowd was just hype because he was in the ring. And, um, yeah, that was that was a good time. That was really fun. I've had some horrible matches. I had a match. I won't say the veteran who he was. I won't put him on blast. But I think he was drunk. Okay. And I was always told he was a cool dude. So we go there. I go to the show, and I'm trying to call the match with him. He's like, whoa, 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 what do you do? What's your gimmick? I said, I don't really have a gimmick, man. I just come out there. This, this is my name, and um, I got a, I get a lot of heat here. He's like, oh, you get a lot of heat here, huh? <clears throat> and, of course, I'm I'm half Indian, half black. He's like, so, I, and I look Arabic and stuff. He's like, well, you got, like, a terrorist gimmick you can do? And, and this guy's ethnic, by the way. So, oh. I mean, he wasn't like some, you know, lame uh, racist guy. He's a, He was an ethnic dude. Oh. And uh, he, I'm like, no, man, that's not what I do. I said, I don't need to do that to get heat. I said, I kind of cut like a Rick Rude style promo to get heat and stuff. And I dump on the crowd. And he's like, oh, so you're the cool heel. I said, no, I can do whatever you need me to do. I said, but I'm not going to do no gimmick like that. That's not what I do. And he kept just going on and on. And then he said, uh, I said, you know what, man? I said, I didn't get booked here to do this. I said, have you ever a problem working with me? And this guy's wrestled for WWE, WCW. I said, have you got a problem with working with me? I said, you go work with somebody else. I said, I'd rather work with somebody else that wants to put on a good match. I said, but apparently you don't want to do that. You have a problem with me. So I said, I'm not going to do that. I said, you go go tell him you want to work with somebody else, man. I said, I'll go tell him for you. He's like, ah, oh, no, 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 settle down, settle down. He's like, well, we're not going to lock up until you get him to chant, you suck. I said, easy. He's like, oh, really? Really easy, huh? I said, okay, man. And so get out there, cut my promo, they start chanting, you suck, before he even gets in the ring, before his music even hits. So we get out there, and he comes out there, and we work the match, he's calling stuff in the ring. We get to the back, totally singing a different song. Oh, that was really good, and blah, 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 and putting me over, and being super cool with me, and all this other crap. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't too happy about that, but... Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to back down just because he was, you know, a semi-name. So, yeah, I, I hate working. I hate it when you, you meet up with guys like that, that forget where they came from, you know what I mean? They made it somewhere in the business, and they all of a sudden they have the big head, don't want to give you the time of day. The greatest, three of the greatest guys, top guys I've ever met, Brian Cage, uh, one of the coolest guys I ever met. First time I met him, we hit it off. We just talked nerd stuff. John Morrison, he was super cool with me. Um, he, when I first got signed, you know, I had won the gut check thing. And they had me cutting a promo. And I was like, sweet, I get to cut a promo. But then he comes and he, he knocks me out of the way. And he would always tease about us like, hey, man, we got to have this feud now that I interrupted your promo time. And he'd always be cool with me. And we'd sit down and talk and shoot the shit. And, when, you know, his wife, Taya, and myself and Brian Cage, we'd after after parties. And I was like a nobody then. I didn't know anybody in that locker room, but they were all cool with me. And then John Morrison, he, they had a pull apart at one show. He goes, hey, have real heat come out. And they're like, why? He goes, oh, we have this little thing going. I want real heat to come out during the pull apart. And then he goes, hey, I, I asked them to have you come out during the pull apart. What do you want to do? And I said, he goes, I want you to come out after everybody else does. Come out last. And I want you to be the last guy in the ring. And I said, that's fine, man. I said, why don't we just do it? I don't want to take away from his match. So I said, why don't I just point at you, jaw jack you, and then I'll start pointing at your chest and you just hit me with a big right hand and knock me out. And then I'll roll out of the ring. He goes, that's all you want to do? I said, yeah, man. You got, you're having this match. He was having a match with Del Rio. And uh, I said, why don't we just do that? And he said, that's awesome. And I thought that was so cool because he's he's like the top guy in the company right now. And nobody wanted to give me shit at the yeah. time. So and he he wanted to give me that. And he'd always say, oh, you know, he'd always tell me, hey, uh, we got to, you know, we got to have that feud, you and I. And uh, I always thought that was cool. And Cage was the same way. Cage and I would always talk about X-Men and comics and movies and would just shoot the shit for hours, man. And he's still like, he'll respond to me and 
And I, I messaged him when I saw he got, you know, the AEW when he came out and he messaged me right back. And I just thought that was really cool. And then to me, Rhino is one of the best guys. Rhino has been everywhere. He's done everything, but he treats guys with such respect and he lets you call the match and um, he lets you do stuff. He trusts you. And he called me on the way to, to the arena when we were about to work and he's talking shit to me and just joking around. And then like, I just had the podcast with him yesterday. He is, that's how you should be. In my opinion, you're a top guy. You should pay a, you know, pass it on. Mm-hmm. Don't be an idiot. Don't be an asshole. Don't be that guy because you were probably, unless you, you were like somebody's kid or you had good connections or you came straight out of college with a collegiate scholarship and you know they they wanted to you know kiss your ass right off the bat you probably struggled on the independent scene and you hustled and you busted your butt and you took your 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 licks but you made it you were one of the guys that made it to the top and guys like that that pay it forward that's the best man you know they pass it on they give a little back to me that's the greatest thing and i hate running into these guys that are self-righteous pricks that act like you're not on their level. Well, no shit, I'm not on your level, but I'm working my ass off to be on your level. Mm-hmm. Don't be an asshole, man. You know what I mean? Like, don't be that guy. I hate guys like that, especially guys that aren't even that great and have a semi-name but act like they're God's gift. It's like, get the hell out of here, dude. You go to a bigger company, you ain't going to be shit. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that. I have a feeling like I know what you're talking about, but when I turn off the camera, when I do that, I'll ask you and you don't have to give me the answer, but, you know, it'll be nice. Yeah. But but I, I I have a feeling I have a feeling but well I can't wait to see your guess who your guess is but <laughs> all right all right so coming back to another questions uh we got the stranger Serena we got you know people um since you brought up you know the good guys in the company tell me about just dream matches give me three guys that you follow like I know you said you watch New Japan just give me three guys in any company AEW ROH should be whatever that you definitely want to match with in the near future. And I would love to have a match with Rich Swan when he's healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I had the tag matches and Swan and I would start, Swan's so easy to, he's one of the best guys you can work with because he can work with anybody. And I feel like I can as well, but I'm just not on his level yet. I think um, I would love to work with Swan because there's something there. There's a chemistry there. And then we'll always be backstage cutting. He'll be he'll do his broad heart impression. I'll do my Steve Austin impression, and we'll just be talking shit to each other. Uh, I wanna I wanna program with Jake something and Impact just because he's my best friend, and we have great matches. And I want it on a nationwide level. If dream match wise, I would love to wrestle guys like Steve Austin. I would have loved to wrestle the Macho Man. Uh, I I mean go promo promo for promo. The Rock, John Cena, guys like that. I would love to do something with Monty Brown. Uh, those guys I would want to have matches with because they're big money guys. They're big. They're big match guys. You know what I mean? And I would love to feel that that energy and love to feel what it's like to be in the ring and learn from guys like that because that's what I aspire to be. Whether if I ever be that, who knows? But that's what I aspire to be, whether people agree or not. That's what I want to be, and that's what I'm going to try to be like. Because those are the guys, to me, that were are forever etched on the lips of professional wrestling fans, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I'd like to be. Those would be my dream matches. Awesome. And that's not taking away anything from anybody doing their thing right now because there's so many talented guys in every single promotion and i love to see it i love to see sonny kiss getting some love sonny's so talented man Uh, he's amazing in the ring such just natural charisma and so athletic uh i love to see that i love to see my boy suge sugar dunkerton getting some love on AEW. he's he's another guy with such natural charisma i love to see that I love to see Dan Housen getting some love and Ring of Honor. I love to see people shouting out about Warhorse right now, uh, answering the challenge to Cody. I would love to see that happen because I've been on on the grind with these guys. I've seen these guys struggle and I've watched them and I've shared locker rooms with them and I just love that. I love to see people like that finally getting the recognition and the, the you know getting some of those struggles out of the way and getting that payoff. I love to see that. Yeah. All right. We're done to our few final questions because I don't want to hold you off for too long. Let's get 
let's get to a memorable moment. Give me two moments, or maybe there's only one that really... And, and it was during a ma match. It may have been before, it may have been after. But it was one that time stood still. Like, it was at one point, as, as, a, as wrestling, as long as you have... You know, there had to be one moment where it's like, this is where, you know, this will be remembered in, in my mind for the rest of my life. I'll tell my kids this. I'll tell, you know, you know, like, this is something that, like, you will remember for the rest of your life. Was it for me or watching somebody else? For you. I want to say for you. I want it to be for you. Uh, you know, the stuff on the farm was great. Riding a horse for the first time. Stuff to me, like, it wasn't in the ring, but... That story we told was so awesome to me. Um, wrestling Trey Miguel, getting my first singles, big singles match, wrestling Trey in Mexico and coming backstage and for the first time, management pulling me aside and telling me, and management and top names pulling me aside and telling me how awesome that was and how great it was to see me break out of my shell uh there was a match at glory pro where i wrestled jake something and it was probably only 100 people there but they bit on everything we did and i think we were the main event and um we got a standing ovation afterwards and uh sometimes submission holds they, they people bite on them and sometimes they don't and i was using the cross face at the time and i had him in a cross face and he was their champion and it's one of my favorite matches ever. That was something I was very proud of. And, you know, there was another thing, and I forgot all about it, what it was, and it makes me mad that I forgot what it was. Um, being at the tapings last time and having Eddie Edwards, who I consider one of the best guys at Impact in all-around wrestling, and uh, him and Elgin. But Eddie, I hadn't seen him in a while, and he walked up to me and he goes, hey, I've been hearing nothing but good things about you and how much you've improved and everyone's been putting you over and I saw some of your stuff and I just wanted to say that it's really good to see you, uh, you know, getting this. You deserve it and you work hard and getting that from Eddie from when I first got there wouldn't say two words to me and now I'm earning that respect from him, getting in the ring with him and hearing him critique everything I did and then the last time I was in the, in the ring with him, the critiques were very small and they were very minute and hearing him say how much I've improved that's like a badge of honor for me because that's the guy I want to be at his level he's a top impact guy he's one of those guys that impact you know what I mean he's their go-to guy that's what I want to be and there's a lot more that I'm forgetting and I apologize you know I'll think of it as soon as we're done and stuff like that <laughs> but stuff like that it's I take pride in that and, and it makes me feel really good um, I love that. And cutting those promos for the first time and people, there's jaw, their jaws dropping like, holy shit, man, I did not know you could talk like this. You know, impact management, people in the truck, uh, freaking, um, oh my God, I can't remember his name. He used to do all the vignettes. He works for us now. Oh my God, what's his name? He used to do all the vignettes, all the major vignettes in the Attitude Era. Oh, my God. I am so mad I forgot his name. Oh, Jesus. They always talk about him on uh, Conrad's show. Bruce Pritchard always puts him over. Dave Sahadi. And I cut the promos, and Sahadi saw the promos I cut. He goes, holy shit, those are some of the best promos I've seen. <laughs> he goes, you can talk. And then Dave Penzer. You know, Dave Penzer. These guys, these guys have been around the best wrestlers in the world. They've been around the best They've been around Rock, Hogan. They've been around the greatest. And they're telling me I'm cutting some of the best promos they've ever seen. What? That blows my mind. You know what I mean? And that, you know what that does for me? It's like, these guys have been around the greatest promos of all time. And they said those are some of the best promos they've ever seen. Holy shit, man. That, that just like, right now, maybe that's it. Because right now I have goosebumps. <laughs> and that's such a great feeling. Because I do feel like I have really good promos. But to hear those guys tell you, who have been around some of the best, that makes me feel really, really good. And I, I, I and even D'Lo Brown. D'Lo Brown, he was partners with the freaking Rock. And he's, he's telling me how great my promo was. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got to be doing something right. Yeah, I gotta be doing something are. right. You so. definitely are.
Well, that's awesome. I want to end it literally right there because that's a perfect spot for people to end it, you know, off that moment. Tell people where they can find it. Tell people how they can support you, what they should do because we need to get the word out. We need to get the okay. word out. This is, okay, you probably, people watching this are probably already following me, so I need newcomers. I need new people. You have to show them. I just put a promo on my Instagram recently. Man, I thought it was so good, like, because usually I crap on all my stuff. I was like, damn, that was a really good promo. Uh, Raju Zane 80 on Instagram, at Hakeem Zane on Twitter. Uh, You can look up Rohit Raju on YouTube or um, on Facebook or Hakeem Zane on Facebook or YouTube, you'll find my channel, you'll find my page. I finally have a pro wrestling tea store. That's the main way you can support me. Get those t-shirts. When you get those t-shirts, take a picture, tag Impact Wrestling. Why? Because I don't have a t-shirt from them yet. And I've been there three years. Show them that I am money. Also, if you don't like, and I'll, it's pro wrestling tees.com slash Rohit. R O H I T. That's like the best way you can support me right now. Buy one of those T-shirts. Take a picture of it. Tag me. Tag Impact Wrestling. Show them. Hey, this guy is money. And then, if you don't like the way I'm being treated, you don't have to tag Don. Don't tag Scott. That's a little bit too personal, and that can also get me in trouble. But please tag Impact Wrestling because it will get back to them. I have a fan right now that tags them. And I want to tell him, dude, you got to chill out. He's like, this is such bullshit what you guys are doing, bro. He, this is trash storyline and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh. And then he was tagging Tony Khan oh. and Cody Rhodes. Yeah, he was oh. like, dude, you guys need to get this guy away from Impact Wrestling. I'm like, as much as I appreciate that, you can't do that. Like, that's like, because then they're going to be like, you're telling fans to tag us. And this is just going to get you in trouble. Guys, I really want the support, and the best way to get the support is by getting the word out. But you got to tag the right people. You can't tag the bosses. You can tag the bosses if you're going to say something okay. You can't shit on him. You can't shit on the company. Um, but please, you got to. The I mean, I know I have a cult following, and the only way people are going to know I have a cult following, and I and I don't want to sound like it's pandering, but yeah, you got to buy the merch, and I do appreciate that. But you also have to let your voices be heard in a civil way. You can be angry, you can be frustrated, but you got to be civil about it because that's the only way they're going to realize they have a star on their hands. And and I and I honestly, I know I have a cult following, and I appreciate you guys so much. I thank you, and uh, I do. And my friend will he'll watch Impact on Twitch. He's like, dude, that that Impact group on Twitch, they love you. They're always rooting for you. You guys got to make your presence known and tag Impact Wrestling and let them know. Push Rohit, give him the mic, anything. Let them know that I'm money and they, they need to realize like they have a star on their hands. That's the only way. I can tell them to I'm blue in the face. I can wrestle good matches. I can cut good promos. If they don't care, if they don't see it, it's never going to happen. Got I it. do appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Go support Rohit Raju. Go tweet at Impact. Let's get Rohit the big push he deserves. If you have not yet, please follow me on all platforms of social media. I am on Twitter. I am on Instagram. All my information is in the bottom below. I am always here to give you guys fresh new stories talent i have so many more big ones coming i have surprises that i cannot wait to release to you guys future talent future names you will go crazy with the talent that i've got so far i will see you guys next time with the newer better bigger i don't even know if newer is a word but so much more is happening don't worry you're gonna enjoy it because i know it's gonna be amazing and i know you guys are gonna love it